Welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. It's Inktober, and it's time to get out the pens, dust off those kneaded erasers, and let's be drawing with ink. Come along with me on this journey we call art, and remember, art makes life better. Thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for being willing to draw with me. Just like normal, we're going to be starting out uh, with our number two pencil. You should have your kneaded eraser and a good drawing pen standing by. I like the Figma Micron ones. Ink drawing is, is one of those things that is just going to help you to draw in every way. Just because ink is a little intimidating, you got to get it down, you can't erase it. You know, but it's also archival. It's never gonna, never gonna leave you. We've got a nice picture here, a nice scrap for us. So let's start out with our number two pencil with simple shapes. And the first thing you need to do is just look at your entire page, decide how big you want this thing, and a good composition comes close to or touches three of the four sides of your paper. And so I want to leave a little bit more space on the front of the swan give it some kind of breathability space, but I wouldn't mind if the back part touches this edge over here. So I'm just going to go in and say, okay, I want his neck or his, you know, the front part of him to be about right there. A little bit more space here. I want the back part to go clear over almost to the edge. So you give it a little, little line there. We need some space for the water, so maybe about right in there. So what we've done is we've just established the size of what we want. You can also say to yourself, oh, I want the head to be up in here somewhere. So now you know how big that swan's going to be. And if you've got a little bit of imagination, you can start visualizing where all that stuff is going to go. So I'm going to start with the body. If you look at the space between the head and where it touches the water down there, the body is about half that space. So if I took half that space said, okay, here's the neck and head, this is the body down here. I can come in here and go something like this. You just say, okay, there's the body. That's how big I want that body to be. Now we've established more of our size and what we want to have taking place there. The rest of this, that curve, there's got to be a neck in there somewhere. And that head then is going to take over right in here somewhere. The beak not quite as far forward as the neck here. So if the neck goes out here, that beak is not quite level. It's got to be back in just a little bit. About right in there somewhere. If you wanted to at this point too, you can kind of start looking back at it and say, well, you know, that neck is too thick or too wide or too, too long or too short or whatever it is. And you start adjusting until you get it about the way you want it. You gotta have that point of reference first before you can start erasing. Once you get your point of reference, then everything's gonna kind of fall into place. Starting out simple shapes. And remember that when you're drawing, if you, if you make a mistake or if it's too big or too small, don't erase it. Draw it right first and then erase what's wrong. So as I'm looking at that, that nose, it's too long. I've got to make it a little shorter. So I draw what's right, draw it right. Then I can come back in with my kneaded eraser and pull out what I did that wasn't quite right. And sometimes you don't even have to erase it because you know you're going to be erasing all this stuff anyway. And remember, we don't draw edges and then fill it in. So as we're going, we might think to ourselves, well, I, I don't have to put that perfect bump on the, on the brow and the edge and everything because I'm going to be doing that with my pen anyway. So maybe I don't want to, maybe I don't want to have to deal with it right now. If you'd like to, you could even start putting in like uh, the curve of the wing. It kind of goes in there somewhere about right in there. I don't know if I'd worry about the individual feathers because as soon as this picture was taken, those little feathers ruffled and they changed anyway. Things that don't change are like where the eye is, where the mouth goes. Those things you may want to 
block those in. Some of those little tail feathers might go up off the page, and that's okay there. You also may want to put in the shadow on the water. I don't think it matters about the ripples exactly where they are, because as we go through this, I'm going to show you how to do the water, and it's, it's so easy. But I'm going to just put in um, just a little guideline to show where the reflection of the swan is in the water. And you may want to put some guidelines in for the ripples. Um, a ripple, if you look straight down on it, it's perfectly circular. But when you look across it, it's elliptical. And so what you do is you just kind of come out, go almost to a point, and then you come back in. Out, in, out, in, out, in. That's your, your basic water ripples. And remember that they're very thin as you're looking across them, but as they get out here, they're a little wider as they go. All the background here, if we need to, we could put something in the background, but I don't think I'd worry about any of that back in here. So we'll just leave it out. I'm just going to throw in a few little guidelines of these little feathers, just the direction. They're just guiding me which direction those feathers flow. Once you get it the size you want it, you get it where you want it. And remember, draw big. It's going to be a lot easier to draw big. Then we're ready to use our ink. Before we do, though, before we use our ink pen, let me just point out a couple of places that you want to keep it really, really light. In other words, less line. Lots of less line. Sometimes a dot is all you're going to need. So if you look at the neck, look how bright that neck is. Across the front of the, the beak, you're going to leave a lot of that out. Across the head, maybe across the back. There's a lot there that we're going to leave out. Remember our mantra? When in doubt, leave it out. So the most important spot for us is probably the head. So I'm going to zoom in to the head and neck um, just so we can see what's going on in there because sometimes it's like, I don't know what's going on with that eye. That eye is still lost. I, I know it's in there. It's got to be in there somewhere. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just start with this little curve. And uh, I'm just going to start doing some little hatched lines. Hatch, 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 hatch. Little lines. I'm not going to actually draw an edge around that, even though it is kind of hard. I'm just going to let that take care of itself. And then you're just going to keep hatching through it. You can use uh, little zigzags. You can use little circles. Um, however you want to put into it. Dots and dashes. I mean, it's just like we did um, with the sphere and the eye. And you just kind of go in and tell it's about what you want it. This beak on top is really light. What if we just put like a little line right there? Maybe a dot right in here or a little dash and just picked up the very end of it right there. If we were to get rid of our pencil there, we would have that broken edge. But you can see where the ed the top of that beak is without having to draw it in. That subliminal line is just so much more interesting. And that's kind of the, the thing we're going to be concentrating on with this is just less line. This There's going to be a lot of ink right here, but the rest of it's going to be very little ink. Just little dots and dashes. If you're if you're thinking, oh, I don't know if that's the right size, use a dot or a dash. That can always be added to or left alone. And if you need to change something or make it a little, little thicker, that's easily done. Whereas if we draw a line, we're stuck with that line. So just little dots and dashes, and then just 
just go along and make those little shapes of dark and light. Really, that's all drawing is, is just putting little shapes of dark and light. And your thing, whatever it is, will come through. And you're not stuck to your drawing. If you think to yourself, oh, um, you know, I, I, I should have made that a little bigger, a little smaller. You're not stuck to it. You can change it. Remember, just a light touch. Light touch. Don't press down with your pen. Just let it skip across the surface just ever so lightly. Your pen will last a lot longer. I'm going to hatch through that eye, but I'm just going to leave a little bit of light on the very tip of that eye. Just a little bit right at the top. It just gives it a little more lifelike, rather than look like a hole in the head. And then there's a little bit of light that's up on top. Rather than draw a little line there, you can just say, well, I'm going to put a little dot or a dash right there. Maybe another little dot or dash right there. And as I come around, I'm just going to do these little tiny dots and dashes. And again, if we got rid of our graphite, which I'm going to do here, get rid of the graphite. Look how light and soft that edge looks. And we, we did, what, five little dots right there, or little lines, and that's it. Go ahead and break it. Leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. And all along the neck, that top part of the neck, just little dashes, and then leave it out. You can always come back in and add more. Inside the, the head there, you can kind of see some of these little light feathers that are in there. Just use little dashy lines. Just ever so lightly, just touch them on the paper. Ever so lightly. And you'll get these itty-bitty little lines that are very soft. Right here across the beak where it's kind of gray, if I if I took my pen and just hatched through there really quickly, I can get some of that gray look. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hatch through this in the shape of that shadow that's there. So that just darken that area right there just a little bit. And if I think, oh, it needs to go a little darker, just do a couple lines in between. And you got it. Piece of cake. And more than likely, we'll have to come back into that beak there a little bit and do some more dark. But right now, that's about it. Even underneath where you've got all that reflected light in there, just a couple little dots and dashes. Keep it very light. And that's really your technique for the whole bird. It's just very soft. We can always come back into it. So right here where there's a shadow across that neck there, I'm just going to do these little dots and dashes. Little light edges. And I'm barely touching the paper. Sometimes I'll, I'll drag my pen across there and it'll only make a tiny little mark. Any mark you make is going to add some gray to it. So you have to kind of decide how much gray is there. When you're doing, uh, whether it's feathers or hair or whatever, 
kind of want to go in the direction that the shadow looks like it's flowing, like hair or feathers. They all have a direction. They have a grain to them. You kind of want to look at that and make your lines go in that direction. They don't all have to, but gives it the illusion of that softness. And the more you do, the more you think, oh, i got to go back into it and add some more. A good technique for this might even be dots, if you want to just go in and just do a few little dots around there. Dots are always smooth and soft. Just don't do too many dots. Start out light. Start with out with a few. And then look at it and say, oh, do I need to add more? And just like we did with our sphere and our sign and our eye, you just go back into it and you just kind of clean it up. Clean up your edges with little dots or dashes. Whatever it takes. The head is our emphasis area. That's the area that uh, people are going to be looking at. So we kind of want to keep that nice and as tight as we can. But everything else, once you get away from the head, you can fudge a little bit. That neck, that chest right there is so light. I may just want to do just a couple little dots and dashes and then just leave it out. If I go, if I take out my graphite there, I mean, that's what I'm left with. That really soft. I mean, you can see the edge, you know where it is, but I've used like four little dots in there. I'm not even pressing the paper against the, the desk. I'm just barely touching it with my pen, giving that little light, light, light edge. I, I am looking at some of the feathers as they kind of layer in and kind of stack on each other. That's where your shadows are coming from. So I'm just going to use little dots and dashes there to kind of show that little bit. But the rest of it's gone. Just leave it out. Dots and dashes. Don't draw too much. I'm going to pick up some of these little feathers in there, and I'll show you how to do those. Um, again, just little dots and dashes, but you, you want those little shapes to come in there. So I'm just going to kind of start out and just do a couple little dots and dashes. And I'm thinking that shape. So as you go through, you're getting that shape with just little dots and dashes. And if it's a little darker, you just add a little more line to it. The more you draw along, the more you think, oh, I need to go back into that and do some more. That's okay. We, we can do that. But right now, let's get the rest of it in. Figure out where all this is going to go. So 
So I'm kind of excited to get to the water. The darker the value, the more line you throw in there. Here's the back. Those little feathers along the back are just little, little dots and dashes. Don't have to draw them all even. The shape of those little shadows that are down in there, you just hatch through the shape of the darkness. Don't draw a line. Just hatch through the shape of the darkness. Here's another one. Or you could use dots. I'm really excited to get to the water, so I'm going to forego some of these feathers here, knowing that I can always come back into it and, uh, and get to the water part. Okay, so the water is dark and light. That's all that I'll, we have to deal with. Where this little shine is that comes across here like this, I'm going to kind of start out and do a little bit of hatching through it because there is very little light in there. So I'm just going to start out and kind of hatch through it like this. That right there established where that, that shadow is of our swan. The rest of it, I can hatch through there and get those little ripples in there. So I can just start out here and just little little dots and dashes. You can do little circles if you want to. I just want to go in the direction that that, that wave is going. So I'm just hatching through those little dots and dashes. And some of this is really light, so all you need is a dot or a dash there. You don't need much in there. Remember to keep it light. And we may have to go back in and hatch through some of that anyway. So there's some more hatching there. Some of that is pretty dark. So little dots and dashes. And if you want, you could do like little circular shapes in some of these little darker areas. Because it's not important what your mark looks like. It's just important that there's some darkness in there. Don't be afraid to leave some things out there. It's almost like scribbling. You just scribble in some. I'm just kind of looking at my scrap, getting the feeling of it, not really exactly where everything goes. As soon as this picture was taken, everything changed anyway. Thank you. 
There's some on the back side. It's not a big deal. If it's not quite perfect. Little dots and dashes. I mean, everybody knows what it is. They're getting the idea. And if you get rid of that graphite, I can pretty much get rid of all my graphite right now. The sooner you can get rid of that graphite, the better, in my opinion. Then it doesn't get on your hand. It doesn't make your drawing look smudgy. And the farther you get away from your, your subject matter, in this case the bird, the less you have to do. And so as I get out, I'm just going to just put a few little dots and dashes. because Everybody kind of knows what that is. And it takes care of itself. You can always come back in and add more. You can, if you want to, on, on the chest there, use a little bit of the water, this little shadow of the water, to kind of define that edge of the breast. So just some hatch lines or something. Well, you're done. With, with the water, at least that part. If you want some of these other little ripples, you could you could put those in there too. They're just very tight little sketchy lines. It gives it the the idea that there's some little ripples, other little ripples or dots or something hitting it. But but you don't need much. Now I'm just going to go back in and finish the swan. The water pretty well taken care of itself. We might need some more in there, more line. But I'm going to finish this first, then go to the water. The water is more of a setting than it is really part of the design. The more line you add, the darker it's going to go. So if you think, well, that's pretty dark, just keep adding line until it's as dark as you want it. Or dots. But remember, it's a bird, so you got to keep it nice and light. The more line you throw in, the heavier it gets.
Now I'm just mm -hmm. going over anything that I look at it and I think, oh, it needs to go a little darker. Just more line in there. And I get to the point where I'm almost scribbling. I mean, it's, I guess it is scribbling. It's, we're going to call it controlled scribbling. Scribbling with a purpose. Still stuck on the head? I'm kind of stuck on the head, too. I keep coming back to the head thinking, I need to make that a little more interesting. That's our area of emphasis. So maybe a little more line in there. Or some dots and dashes or something. So was the swan as easy as you thought it was going to be? Nothing's as easy as you ever think it's going to be. That's life. If I had plenty of time, I'd probably use a lot more dot in here because it's just so smooth and so so nice. But we're running out of time, so I, I have to throw in some hatchies, hatches there. we got about two or three minutes left is all. Try to finish up as much as you can. And a good place for a signature is not right on the edge. You want to leave it up a little bit. So right in the water right there. Maybe down in there somewhere. Yeah, it's a good place for it. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully, somewhere along the way, it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better. <laughs>